Is it done? There we are. Okay. Hi. I love that intro. It, it really doesn't make sense now, but okay. Bunny! Bunny! Yes? If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this. You know what? Fuck the intro. I performed at Pride, y'all! Yes, you did. I performed at Pride, and I'm so happy about that. I, I, I've, I'm, what I've been trying to do lately is uh, I've been trying to have one massively cathartic moving experience a year. <laughs> In 2022, I ran a marathon, and that was a big deal for me because my dad was a semi-professional bicyclist and a uh, marathon runner and a triathlete and yada 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 and so when i was little when i was like eight he, he made me run a marathon with him and it was like a 5k fun run or something and and uh while i was running way early on in the race i fell and i broke my knee open and it started bleeding everywhere but my dad didn't see the bleeding he just saw his uh feminine sissy son on the floor crying and said you better get up and finish this race or I'm going to leave you. And I did because I was bleeding. So my dad left me there. Okay. Yeah. And so I finished the race by myself and then collapsed and was sent to the medical tent. And to this day, I don't think my parents believe that I finished the race. So, uh, being able to train for a marathon and run the marathon and finish the marathon was a big deal for me. I finished 11th in the women's category and 28th overall, which is a huge deal for my unhealthy ass. You really got to get M Maxwell has been doing a thing where he's been popping in and uh, holding up random things and it's funny, but if you notice on the corner here like on my uh, Zoom screen it's really big but on the actual screen on Twitch, it's very small. So if you are going to be popping in and holding up random objects, uh, you really got to lean closer to me, okay, in the future, just to let you know. So then this year, I performed at Pride, and it was a big deal, and I absolutely loved it. And I'm really proud of myself, and I just wanted to talk about it here on half. This cat just keeps jumping up here and it's driving me yeah. nuts suddenly okay. there was just a cat's ass yeah so this is today's hat because i believe it's an historical event that i performed at pride they gave me a half hour set so i uh did about 45 minutes <laughs> and i was i came off stage and that was the first thing out of my wife's mouth you were 50 minutes over and i'm like really She's like, yeah, didn't you hear me? Didn't you see me on the side? It's like, I, no, I was in the zone. I have no freaking, I, I have no concept of time, no concept of how long I was. I was just rocking it. And that was all I was focused on. My favorite part of the performance was there was one part that I was super excited to do. And I told everybody about it. I told my wife about it. I told my kids about it. I told my oldest ones about it. I'm going to do this one weird thing. And everyone says, oh, okay. All right. If that's that's a bit weird. Why are you doing that? Are you sure? And I'm like, yes, it's going to be great. And everyone's like, oh, okay. And I started doubting it. But at the same time, I'm like, no, have faith in yourself, Mei Lin. You're going to rock this. So I that's went like, on would... stage in between mm -hmm. books and I said, okay, this was going to be the big giveaway part of my performance where I was going to give away a T-shirt. Now, to be clear, I didn't want to give away T-shirts because I wanted to give out T-shirts. I just felt that this was the only chance that I'll ever have in my life to shoot strangers with a T-shirt cannon. Yeah. And also, to be clear, I was going to George Romero this. I was going for headshots. Just bam, bam, bam. But the Pride Alliance. So, so you were, you were looking to put a motherfucker down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm saying all of this to the audience of like hundreds and hundreds of people, it, it, and 
you know, they're laughing and they're it, the Pride Alliance wouldn't pay for the T-shirt can. And, and, and then also, apparently, I would also have to pay for T-shirts. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that was a lot of money and I couldn't afford that. So I, I wanted to give away something. But again, um, thanks. So, so I wanted to give away something, but it had to be something that I, I could afford. So I gave away... Seven copies of Nickelodeon's live-action sitcom The Naked Brothers Band on DVD. Wow. You know, I've got these, like, crappy DVDs, and I'm holding them up. I am absolutely serious. Who wants a free copy of The Naked Brothers Band on DVD? And it's so interesting because all of my life I've been hired to do story times to entertain children, to entertain little kids to entertain families and to entertain this and that. And here's here I am in front of like hundreds of people and they're all like teens and in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and older people and they're all gay and they're all cool. But when I started giving away copies of a Nickelodeon live action sitcom, there were some freaking cool ass, too cool for school, hipsters, gay 17 year olds who rushed the stage like I was the friggin' Beatles. <laughs> get themselves a free copy. And there's little kids like, I want one, I want one. And then there are adults like, me, me, me. And it's like, I knew this would fucking work. <laughs> I told everybody and everyone thought it was going to be too weird. But I'm giving them away. And I said, I would like to thank Fire Lake Grocery Store by my house for always carrying DVDs that no one in their right mind would want to spend money on. And while I'm giving away copies of the Naked Brothers Band on DVD. And then there's all these people in the audience. And, and one of them was a uh, family who used to come to see me at the bookstore in Oklahoma. And then went to go see me at uh, the nonprofit in Norman. And now they're here to see me perform at Pride. And I asked the dad, I said, hey, can you take a few pictures? Because all of my family's backstage. And so, uh, you know, I just wanted some pictures. And he said, yeah. And the, the Pride Alliance, the group that I was performing for, they took footage of the entire thing. But it's also a massive organization, and I don't know if I'll ever see that footage. I've asked them about it, but I haven't heard anything. But, and also, I had a, I tried doing a live stream, but I couldn't get the live stream going at the time of recording it. And I had a camera set up on stage with me, but they said, it is super hot out there. It is dangerously hot. It's like getting close to 100 degrees. So we're going to move your chair and your speaker back so you're not burning in the heat. But they had drag shows, drag performances. So there was a runway that went through the audience and me being me all hyperactive and stuff. I started walking up and down that and talking directly to people and and moving around. So I have footage, but 80 percent of it does not have me in the footage. OK, so that kind of sucks. But. Um, that's why I got the sunburn. I spent most of my time directly in the sun during the entire performance. One thing that I'm really proud of is that I was worried that that uh, here's all these cool, beautiful, wonderful, young and old gay people who are here. And then here's me. And I'm like, a am a stay at home. mom. Yeah. You know, I'm not a drag performer. I'm not a singer. I'm not a band. I'm not a dancer. I'm not burlesque. I'm not a drag queen. I'm just a trans woman reading some kids' stories, and I was a bit worried about that. Uh, and then I get there, and I'm being introduced to all the sound guys and the sound technician and the other sound technician, and here's the stage manager, and here's the lights. And you can tell that the Pride Alliance, who are all gay, hired all of these straight-ass white dudes to run the stage, and they're just there for a paycheck. And they're off to the, well, what's your name? Uh, Maylin? Okay, hi, my name's John. This is John. And uh, this is John. We're going to be uh, running things for you, just making sure you got a smooth performance. Damn it, I'm worried about it. I had their asses cracking the fuck up on the side. 
There was yeah. one time where the main sound guy was on the floor because he was laughing so hard. Yay! I made two dirty jokes on stage. One was on purpose. The other one was accidental. The first dirty joke I was reading, that was the one that was on purpose. I was reading the book Prince and Knight. And while the knight is distracting the dragon by using his shield and his armor to shine a light into the dragon's face, the prince jumps onto the dragon and really quickly starts wrapping rope around the dragon and ties the dragon up. And, I'm, and I say, wow, it looks like this prince has had experience tying people up with rope. And I continue reading the book while I hear people laughing in the audience and I, he I see the sound guys right next to me laughing their asses off and so i stop and i say look if you thought anything dirty just then that's your fault i led you to the lake you're the ones who jumped in <laughs> i'm keeping it clean here i'm trying to do a clean show there's kids here crap and then i continue reading it it was a big deal for me to say crap in fact one of my uh former uh booksellers from my uh from the barnes noble and norman came to me after the show and said you said crap and i said i know this was my first story time that was well and truly just for me yes and not for anybody else you know and so my second dirty joke was a real bad one mm -hmm. that definitely all the straight sound technicians love all the guys who definitely have Pornhub accounts loved this joke I didn't mean for it to happen, but I ended with the very, very hungry caterpillar because I, at the end, I do this teary thing where I talk about how I was a caterpillar for 40 years, crawling around on the floor, not knowing that I had wings inside and could fly. And I've been a butterfly for two years and I love it, but I mourn all of the time that I lost that I could have been a caterpillar, a butterfly flying in the air. So I'm reading. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. And I get to the point where he says, uh, he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. And at that point, when I'm doing a normal story time, I say, hey, you sh we, we, don't, we shouldn't body shame, not even caterpillars. And I wanted, and that's what I usually do when I read it, but I wanted there to be some sort of a, uh, some sort of a hook, some sort of an ending to that joke some sort of a punchline. So yeah. I, I ad lib something and I said, hey, we do not body shame here at Oklahoma City Pride Fest. And everyone's cheering. It's a cheap pop like McCauley. We don't body shame, not even bugs and insects and caterpillars, I think. And off the top of my head, I, I thought, what about like a BBW, a, w which is a term for a big, beautiful woman, but for a caterpillar. So I said, I think that this caterpillar is a big, beautiful caterpillar. Just don't use those initials. And then I kept reading it, and a few people in the audience laughed. But the white straight sound guys were on the effing floor. <laughs> I just made a big black cock reference. Yes. In the middle of an Eric Carl book. And they lost it. And I thought, hey, maybe this uh, story time event will be popular and maybe I'll get some offers. I wasn't expecting the first offer once I was done to be from the fucking straight white sound guy. Really? But he came up to me and said, let me tell you, that was one of the funniest fucking performances I've ever seen. Have you thought about doing stand-up comedy? And I said, well, I consider my story times to be stand-up comedy because the way that I saw my entire performance was it was a it was a pilot for my story times being for kids and adults. I've always felt that, but I've always had to cater for kids. So my 45-minute set at OKC Pride Fest was like the first time that I could officially say I made everyone laugh. There were maybe like 20 kids there. All the rest were adults, and they fucking loved it. And so I feel that I could go to a bar and do a story time. I could go to a dispensary and do a story time. And so he 
took my uh, contact info and is trying to get me some uh, uh, some uh, some performances at uh, colleges in Oklahoma. Cool. And then I'm walking around the the afterwards. I'm walking around the the Pride Fest, and all these people are stopping me. Uh, Malin, Malin, oh, I love your performance. And these trans people are coming up to me and saying how I, I inspire them, yada yada yada. And I find a company there that I wrote an email to a few weeks ago, trying to get uh, some performances and they said may lynn we saw your performance it was hilarious we're sorry we haven't emailed you back but we want to be in business with you and so uh, they're having a two-year anniversary for their business but uh this weekend is the end of their two-year anniversary party and uh sometime next week we're gonna sit down and we're gonna go through the calendar and so i haven't officially announced it yet but yeah i I'll be doing some story times for a uh, restaurant in Norman fairly oh. regularly coming up soon. Nice. That's freaking awesome, dude. And then afterwards, you know, my the first thing out of my wife's mouth is, you were 15 minutes over, and I'm like, oh, shit. And the president of the entire Pride Fest comes up to me and said, you blew, that was amazing. That was incredible. We can't wait to have you next year. We can't wait to work with you. And I'm like, I went over. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And he said, don't worry about it. It was great. You you knocked it out of the park. You did wonderful. And then afterwards, I, I saw the vice president. The vice president was just gushing over me. And she said, when you auditioned for Pride, our jaws were on the floor. And we automatically started thinking about all the things we can do together. So oh. it, we're going to get together. Yeah, little. We're going to get together and start thinking about uh, uh, ways that that I can perform for some gay friendly story times for kids around the I, Oklahoma area. I, ha I, ha I have a suggestion. Maybe it's already been suggested, but take some of those banned books and read them loud and read them. Proud. Yeah, that's that's why I read Prince and Knight. I, I said even in the in the, the event that like. This is a banned book. Basically, if you have this in your possession and you fly into Florida, the moment you step out of the airplane, they tase you in the privates. <laughs> and that is why I am reading it today. Well, I think they do that even without the book. Yeah, <laughs> even without the book. It's just the, the welcome to Florida. You know? Yeah. You, you go to Hawaii, they put a lay around your neck. Go to Florida, taser to the privates. FYI, on Twitch, it says the Pope on film, episode 457, Rocky 4. It is episode 458, and we're doing Rocky 5. Oh, how about that? I forgot to change just, that shit. Just wanted to point that out. I appreciate it. No problem. So now I'm just in this in this thing where I'm just tr I'm still trying to come down. You know, it's been oh, one yeah. week since I've done the performance. It's been... And I'm trying to just get back into normal and, and just not having one good thing about having finally done the performance. I can stop listening to so much Rocky soundtrack. Yes. Really happy about that. I could go back to listening to normal music and not getting pumped up with the Rocky soundtrack. So that's a positive. People in so chat, can you identify the things that Maxwell's holding up? Just uh, wondering. I know what he's holding up. I don't know if everyone on the small screen can. So that's it for half this week. I performed at Pride. It's amazing. And now I'm looking towards the future. And uh, thank you. Cut on that. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be discussing...